Take us forward. Good afternoon. Here is an ease on noon. First, the highlights. Lagos State Environmental Sanitation Corps removes shanties, dislodges illegal occupant at Elegbata waterfront. Federal government decries rising spate of building collapse, malls stricter punitive measures against the falters. And the foreign scene, the United States military force carries out strike against Syria. And in sports, more players arrive in Abidjan ahead Super Eagles 2025 Africa Cup of Nations qualifier against Benin Republic. And now to details, I am Mike James. Lagos Environmental and Sanitation Corps, Lagesque, popularly known as Kai, has removed 54 illegal shanties, which harbored 84 illegal occupants and eight makeshift toilets beneath Echo Bridge at Ibuteru area of the state. The Corps Marshal of the agency, Olani Cole, who led the dislodgement operation, said this is in consolidation of existing efforts aimed at reducing the space of environmental nuisances to the barest minimum in the metropolis. The Elegbeta Water Channel, which spans the Lagos Lagoon right under the Echo Bridge around the Ibuteru axis, turned home to miscrant, illegal occupant occupying the waterfront usually in the habit of promoting indiscriminate dumping of refuse into the lagoon, activating the base of the bridge as a criminal hideout and enjoining open defecation urination. Cole said the agency swung into action after seven a seven-day abatement notice, which has not and was not adhered to. He appreciated the laudable leadership of the Commissioner for the Environment and Water Resources, Takumbo Wahab, stressing that the mandate of the agency to maintain a cleaner and greener environment as enshrined in the themes plots agenda of Governor Babaji Desol remains paramount and sacrosanct to the collective cleanliness of the state's environs. As part of its commitment to showcase Lagos's rich cultural and historical heritage to a global audience, Lagos State Ministry of Tourism, Act and Culture has concluded plans to document all tourism sites across the state on Wikimedia in partnership with the Wikimedia User Group Nigeria. In furtherance of this goal, the ministry, through a collaborative effort with a dedicated Wikimedia in residence, has conducted a need assessment covering the ministry's key activities across its various departments. This assessment is designed to ensure that all tourism sites and cultural assets are accurately documented to meet international standards. Commissioner for Tourism, Atten Culture, Toke Benton Awenka, in a statement said the ministry, alongside its partners, will also host a webinar on Thursday, November 14, targeted at journalists from newspapers and magazines across Nigeria. Benton Awenka said the webinar would feature a panel session with an esteemed lineup of experts. She said the next phase of this project will see the ministry organizing a contest among writers, encouraging participants to create outstanding articles on Lagos' tourism sites. Nigerian lawmaker Mabangida Husseini, representing Jigawa Northwest Senatorial District, has voiced concern over the rising cost of food items at the start of the harvest season, urging the federal government and other relevant authorities to address the issue urgently. Hussaini highlighted that insecurity in food producing state as a major factor behind escalating prices, calling on the government to address these security challenges to prevent further strain on food supply. The lawmaker also expressed concern over the economic impact on rural communities in the northern state and other parts of the country, emphasizing that the rising cost of basic food items is alarming. Hussaini appealed to federal, state and local government along with relevant stakeholders to take immediate action to address the situation, stressing that 
Strategic interventions are needed to mitigate this growing crisis and protect the nation's food security. To the rest of the stories, the federal government has decried the impact of building collapse across the country, saying that punitive measures will be meted out to the fault as of building codes. Director of Planning, Research and Statistics, Federal Minister of Housing and Urban Development, Mohamed Bala, stated this at the opening of a five-day meeting of the National Council on Land, Housing and Urban Development, with the theme, Housing the Future. Bala stated that the federal government is working seriously to ensure that the issue is minimized, stressing that efforts are ongoing to curb the menace. He emphasized that, that memos were asked to be submitted around three months ago concerning housing development, while experts were invited for presentations that will be deliberated, discussed, and reviewed. Bala stressed that the existence of these recurring issues is as a result of natural causes, non-adherence to building codes, and the use of substandard products. The federal government is eyeing a single-digit tax regime to reduce the burden of multiple taxation on Nigerians. Chairman Presidential Committee on Fiscal and Tax Reforms, Taiwo Dili, who made this known, explained that all taxes would be cut down to single digits when the ongoing reforms are concluded. Oyedili outlined strategies that the government will be implementing to ensure that tax revenue increases without raising the tax burden, stating that such strategies include the removal of disincentives to business formalization, use of technology, data for intelligence, and tax simplification. He noted that Nigerian tax system is one of the most backward in the world, describing the situation as embarrassing. It will interest you to know that a single-digit tax system allows less than 10 taxes to be paid by citizens or businesses within a period of time. And in some foreign news, the United States military has carried out strikes against targets in Syria. United States Central Command, CENTCOM, stated that this was a response to recent attacks on U.S. forces by Iranian-aligned targets in the country. CENTCOM's Commander General, Michael Eric Kurila, said in a statement that the U.S. military action sent a clear message to armed groups backed by Iran and operating in Syria. Kurila stated that the attacks against the nation and coalition partners in the region will not be tolerated, describing the attacks of a 24 hours reckless. He stressed that these strikes will degrade the Iranian-backed groups and the ability to plan and launch future attacks. Over to sports news, the trio of Wilfred Ndidi, Kelechi Ihenacho and Mad Kaukui have arrived at Super Eagles camp ahead of the Group D Afghan 2025 qualifier with Benin Republic in Abidjan, Côte d'Ivoire. The latest arrivals was confirmed by the Super Eagles media officer, Promise Efoge. With the latest arrivals, the number of players in camp is now 11. They joined Amas Obasogi, Rafael Onyedika, Frank Onyeka, Moses Simon, Bruno Onyemechi, Samuel Chukwezi, Gabriel Osho, and Fisayo Dili Bashiru who are already in camp. The Super Eagles will take on Benin Republic on Thursday, November 14, in Abidjan for the match day five fixture. The team will then host Rwanda at the Godzilla Aquavia Stadium in Uyo on November 18. After four games, the Eagles are top on the log on 10 points. Benin Republic is in the second place with six points. In the third place is Rwanda on five points, while Libya remains bottom with just one point. And that was our news at 12. But just before we go, always carry out proper and adequate checks on your vehicles before setting out. You can follow us and like all our various social media platforms. X, Traffic Radio 961, Facebook, Lagos Traffic Radio 96.1 FM, Instagram, Lagos Traffic Radio 961, 
Subscribe and watch our news and programs. It's live on YouTube, Traffic Radio 961. You can also visit our website, www.trafficradio961.ng. Did you know that the Sawulu administration supplied 86,012 furniture sets to 775 public schools? You can always get details on the Lagos State Government website and to end the news, here are the highlights of the major stories. Lagos State Environmental Sanitation Corps Lagask, popularly known as Kai, has removed 54 illegal shanties which harbored 84 illegal occupants and 8 makeshift toilets beneath Eco Bridge at the Butero area of the state. The federal government has decried the impact of building collapse across the country, saying that punitive measures will be meted out to the fault as of building codes. We also told you that the United States military has carried out strikes against targets in Syria. And in sports, the trio of Wilfred Ndidi, Kelechi Hianacho and Madka Okoye have arrived at Super Eagles camp ahead of the Group D Afghan 2025 qualifier with Benin Republic in Abidjan, Côte d'Ivoire. And for contact with the newsroom, send a message to info at Traffic Radio 961.ng. That ends the news broadcast. It was compiled by Mojid Ololadi. Thank you for listening. My name is Mike James. Beautiful afternoon to you, Lagos.